Oh, hi Scrappers. Yeah, I just wanted to talk again about crystals and crystal oscillators. Um, firstly, with all the crystals, um, we basically call them crystal oscillators just so they're uh, a little bit easier to identify. Um, it's more of a habit that we call them crystal oscillators, but technically um, they're not all crystal oscillators. They're um, crystals and, um, and then crystal oscillators. Um, so here I've got a, a mixture of both crystal oscillators and crystals and the real way you can tell is that that's a crystal oscillator because it's got four pins okay um, here's another crystal oscillator it's got four pins um, uh, another version the round type of crystal oscillator it's also got four pins now or maybe in this case three but uh, usually they've got four pins for crystal oscillators and crystal oscillators also you know obviously contain silver in there but they're a little bit more involved um, where they can also have a, a little bit of circuitry inside or a little um, tiny little IC chip and stuff so they're a little bit more contaminated just for silver recovery alone but I keep them with my small uh, crystals um, and the reason is because th these these are all just crystals we still call them crystal oscillators just to identify them but technically they they're just crystals um, as you can see they're they're um, they've got pins only on two sides so there's just two pins to a crystal and the same with uh, these long ones they're upright ones they've got two pins that's a crystal as you can see this one here is unused and so therefore it's got the long pins um, that's yet to go into the circuit board but um, so that's the difference this is a crystal uh, four sided four pins is uh, a crystal oscillator okay um, now as you can see I've got two separate piles I keep these long ones these long crystals um, that sort of sit upright on the board are separate because I find that these are the easiest ones to process to um, get the silver out of them um, and if I was going to do any by hand these are the ones that I would do by hand um, the rest of this stuff it's very very hard to get the little silver piece out of them um, you can sure the uh, these little um, crystals uh, it's very hard to open these up and then um, and not to um, actually crush the crystal and can you know which also has the silver sort of stuck to it uh, so they're very hard to open and so um, I'm just debating what to do with these because uh, once I've built up a really big collection of them it's going to be really uh, you know time consume it's going to take months to um, bust open every little one to get that tiny little piece of silver and uh, it's such a small amount of silver that it would take um, you know <laughs> more than a thousand of these to even get one ounce of silver and as you might know you know an ounce of silver today is worth about twenty dollars US um, uh, and so for twenty dollars um, and need you know, more than a thousand of these and it would take you days to open up every one um, it may not be worth doing these by hand whereas these ones here the long ones they're a little bit easier to open up uh, to get the little piece of silver out of it so these ones you know I reckon you know I've got some when I've got spare time and I feel like doing some having a bit of fun with these I'll do these by hand to get the silver little pieces out but even still these you know you're going to need probably you know almost a thousand of these to just get one ounce of silver okay so um, you know silver is something we all like to stack and stuff yeah but uh, you know it's it, it's still only silver it's not gold you know if it was gold it would be a totally different story um, gold is like twelve hundred dollars US an ounce and so even the smallest pieces of little bits of gold that we can get um, it all adds up and and 
and in the end you're going to get a good payout but with silver it's really not worth a great deal so you know it just depends on how much work you want to put into them but uh, certainly if, if you're looking for um, um, you know to get as much silver as you can well sure do these as well as um, probably the best thing to get silver out of is the keyboard mylars um, um, you know they're, they're easy to get you find keyboards everywhere and you build up those mylars and it's a very easy process to get the silver out and uh, and yeah and, and and you get quite a lot of silver in a mylar you know one mylar might be um, 50 of these you know uh, who knows you know I'm not really sure uh, because I'm not a refiner I'm, I'm a scrapper so um, a lot of people get confused and think because because I'm accumulating this sort of stuff for precious metal recovery um, that I, I actually refine this stuff well right now uh, um, I don't refine because it's a very complicated and technical thing and it's very dangerous and uh, um, I, I'm not confident in refining my own precious metals at this stage maybe in a few years time when I've got more time to study and research how to refine uh, read hoax book and um, you know really understand how chemicals work how they react with each other um, and all the this sort of thing um, I'm just going to end up killing myself and so I'm not one of these guys that wants to put up a, a refining video like how to get silver out of these or how to refine gold or palladium or something like that because I'm not I'm only going to show you as a beginner and um, you know you know we're all going to just kill ourselves you know so there's so many other options to doing this you know there are there are people that are really confident in refining their experience they know what they're doing they've uh, they've gone to school and they've uh, learned um, chemicals and how they react and all that sort of thing so you know even if you get half the value out of it and you give half to to the actual refiner um, it's much better off than than risking your life just to get you know especially when it comes to silver just to get a few grams of silver you know which a gram is not even worth is worth what 50 cents a gram um, it's not worth it so so um, really before you start refining re really do your research and I'm not talking about looking at those quick and uh, nasty uh, you YouTube videos with how to refine stuff. Most of those guys are just um, just being pushed into doing a video um, the best that they can, and they you know it's not really the right process. They don't show you um, all the safety equipment around the outside of it. Um, they're just basically backyarders just um, having a go, and and most likely most of them don't even only done it once w to make that video, and they don't really do it again. So. Um, so really, do you, if you want to refine, if this is if refining precious metals is something that you're really into, then you know look to do it professionally. You know look to do it you know um, the proper way and and have all the research in your head so you know it off by heart what's going on. Um, don't just uh, um, you know don't just uh, follow a few little guidelines that you see on YouTube and then just go for it because you'll end up killing yourself and it's no joke. You know we're talking about some of the most dangerous chemicals you can deal with in the world you know so so you know really be careful what you're doing and um i recommend you know accumulating stuff like this so you, you get your your oscillators off circuit boards you know um just keep building them up over time um, as you're building them up look look for someone that's prepared to refine go to forums and you know eventually find someone that's going to refine for you and um and give you back the silver um and you just send them the stuff that you're accumulating scrapping stuff all right, but that's just my little um, opinion, you know, um, what you do is your business, you know. But anyway, so what I wanted to show is the reason why I separate um, these long ones um, to, the, to everything else, to crystals and crystal oscillators, because um, these ones are really hard to get the silver out. So I'm thinking the only real economical way to do um, these very small crystals is is to not try and open it up and get the the little piece of silver out of it because they usually crush and it just ends up as little fine specks um is to try and get these 
processed another way maybe to crush these in a ball mill or you know to get someone you know to do a bit of research and to find out how to um you know even melt the metal down um completely and then you know extract the silver out of what's left um i'm not really sure but uh all i do know is that it's really complicated you know, really hard to get that little bit of silver and, and i'll just i'll do some examples for you so okay so here we go this is a little crystal and i'll just use side cutters and you need quite strong side cutters because it's really hard to get into it um okay and so get that rubbish off it's they're they're so small and very very fiddly they're just hard to um hard to do and they just take so much time just to do one let alone um you know enough to make it worthwhile you'd need thousands of them um so okay well this one actually opened up pretty easy compared to a lot of them um so so with these small ones there's only a very tiny about amount of silver so this here this is that's the silver okay and it's basically so you got the the top cap which is now just an empty cap so we can get throw this away and just the base of it okay so now there's might be a little bit of silver sort of like uh, used as a little contact points or kind of like silver solder on the edges uh, maybe i'm not really sure but that's your silver that's your main part of silver and it's basically just a little thin crystal film with silver on it um and it's brittle okay so it crushes up and you can crush it up into little bits so that's your silver so as you can see there's very small particles of of silver and to get even one gram of the this let alone pure silver would would take you know quite a few probably 50 of them um so to get one ounce of silver out of these little crystals you're gonna need a thousand of them or so so keep that in mind but that's okay if you're just uh you know you're getting them anyway you can just take them off circuit boards and over over you know a long period of time you build them up and you're gonna accumulate it's still silver so you know um it's not worth much but it's it's you know still you know if that's what you like then it's better than nothing okay so so you take away the rubbish and i highly doubt that there's any silver in this thing okay so so that's it and then you can just put this into a little jar or something like that okay um now these these long ones they're um very much the same but uh, just easier to get out the the little piece of silver in there and uh i'll give one a go okay so it's a it's a bigger piece of silver um obviously because the can's bigger so they 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 could use a bigger piece so so here I've, I've cut off the end okay now again there could be a little bit of silver on here so if you don't mind your silver mixed up with a bit of tin and all whatever this is this metal then you know you might be want to save the this part too and um see if you can get any silver out of that but uh yeah you you might actually get a little bit off the top there i'm not really sure but uh probably not because uh the silver is still inside this can if i can get it out okay so now this can is empty and we've got our little crystal tab with silver on it okay now on the sides of these this tab there are two little pieces of wire okay now these wires on um, they would have to be silver because um they're connecting to the silver okay so i would keep these wires and i would put all this together but so that's it that's just a little tab 
and you know it looks a little bit like a keyboard mylar the silver on the keyboard mylar but the the material it's on it's it it's the crystal okay so you can you can crush this crystal and you can see it it sort of just breaks up into little pieces okay so that's that's why I like doing these long crystal oscillators and I keep them separate or crystals because I keep them separate so so um, because as you can see it was so much easier to get that little round tab out and and so therefore I can accumulate these a lot easier then I can accumulate the silver out of these. So I'm just hoping that someone's going to come along and say, yeah, you put them under a ball, uh, a ball mill to grind it down and, and process the metal that way. And it'll be, you know, it'll just save months of work. Um, so yeah, uh, I lost my long one. Okay, so get another long one. Bring the side cutters right up to the edge of the, the base. Snip that off. Okay. So again, there's. You just need to have a look at this. Yeah. So the little contact points where the that wire that I showed you inside um, connects to that might have a little dob of silver. So you might want to put these. You know what I probably will do is. I'll keep these and I'll throw these in with the other ones that I assume that I'm going to crush down. So if there's a little bit of silver in that, I'll still get that bit of silver. But what I want is the guaranteed silver at the moment and that is the little tab inside our little container here. Okay, and there we go. So this container now is guaranteed there's no silver in that it's just a container to hold our little tab and those two pieces of wire that that connect to the tab and connect to the um to the actual ends to the pins here that go into the circuit board okay so those those little wires are definitely got silver and silver plated right it's just like gold Gold on gold, copper on copper. Well, usually silver on silver. Okay, so that, there's our little tab. And we lost it. But you saw that. So, so that was it. Um, I've got a really huge one here. Um, if you compare the size, a lot bigger. I'm just really curious. It's sort of got like a... A uh, rubbery kind of base inside or a plastic kind of base I'm not sure if it's the same thing it looks like a crystal so um, it's the only one I've got so I, I might as well while we're here let's have a look and we can both see together what we get out of it Puh. okay well that, that was like a ceramic -y, crystal -y kind of um, stuff I'll just try and get that get rid of that okay so we'll have a look inside the cap and see if we've got the same thing a bit fell out all right beautiful so that was a huge um, huge crystal cap and as you can see we m looks like we've got most of the uh, the little silver plate and there's bits of uh, crystal powder sort of around um, so you know you just want to you don't want to really breathe it in but it's not necessarily that toxic I don't think but that's our silver little tab okay so even in that huge crystal it was just a bigger piece of silver okay and so and it crushes just like uh, the other ones so you've got a mixture of crystal and silver okay so really easy whereas these ones as i said so like this one here this is a crystal oscillator okay because it's got four pins even these are very hard to open i'll give it a, a little bit of a go 
but it's a it's, it's very different inside you'll see that uh, yeah I'm not sure if you can see in there but uh, I can see like little glistening of um, crushed uh, crystal and silver in there so there's definitely silver in them it's just that it's uh, almost impossible <coughs> um, to uh, get it out and see if we can if we can just see the the uh, the, the the crystal has uh, shattered into little pieces but it's the only way you can really get to um, get it open is to pretty much crush it all and uh, so no doubt there's going to be still quite a bit of silver inside that we haven't been able to get out so this is why my theory on these and the really small ones and even these big ones is uh, to um, to somehow get the whole lot processed together because uh, it's just going to be a mess trying to open them up and um, so here's, um, here's a, a big one that I did a little bit earlier but as you can see with the mess of the metal it's just really hard to open these up and uh, inside you can see some silver um, there's like little circuitry inside and uh, and and so on so you're not really going to be able to recover you know a nice clean piece of silver out, out of um, these crystal oscillators like we did with the the nice um, these long crystals all right these are the only ones that I can get them out of so but you know there's you know that little plate there that's definitely silver and uh, any of the bonding wire is silver and you can see the other side it's sort of like silver on copper or something might be aluminium but uh, that's definitely silver there and then inside we've got like a little circuitry and uh, not really sure what's going on in there so um, yeah that's why I, I much prefer these are the only ones I like to do by hand and these ones yeah I'm just gonna keep if I can't you know if I can't find uh, a ball mill or someone that can crush this up into a fine powder or something or or melt them down somehow and then extract the silver then I'll probably just sell these to someone that wants to give them a go um, but these ones I'm defi definitely going to keep and um, and get get those little tabs out and yeah it's just a, a, a very easy uh, little thing with these crystals and uh, so doesn't take much time at all and um, you know it's just one of those fun things to do I suppose and uh, knowing that you 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 know you're getting some silver. Um, so there you go this one's a little bit different and you can see the silver in there it's got the silver wire and uh, you have to excuse my hands I've been doing uh, inkjet printers so I've got ink all over my hands that I can't seem to get off um, so yeah so that's your silver and uh, that's out of your um, your standard crystal and uh, on on circuit boards um, just give you a few examples uh, so that here that's your crystal that's one of those small ones okay that are hard to get and here you can see this is actually a crystal oscillator okay so a crystal oscillator and a crystal okay um, that was off an old TV on a, a modern TV board like a plasma uh, a lot of you know they don't use as many of these long ones on on uh, TVs and computers these days because everything's sort of like slim line so they're trying to keep everything flat so there you can see the um, crystal there and another crystal here okay so there's two crystals on this board uh, actually three there's one more over here so as you can see they're, they're pretty much everywhere so um, they don't take too much too long to accumulate if you're scrapping e-waste um, <coughs> and here's a, another good example is uh, you got your crystal here now this is like on a uh, a telecom like a modem board a Cisco board um, there's you you got your little crystal there okay it's just a flat one 
and here is a crystal oscillator and you can see that these crystal oscillators are different I keep these separate they've got the little gold band around the edge so inside there will be a little bit of silver again with the crystal but um, it's also got a gold band and on the base of them they're like a ceramic kind of thing so I keep these separate these are more towards gold recovery than silver recovery and for, um, just one more uh, these are just off some old kind of video board but here's a um, here's one of the long crystals okay so these are the ones that I like most so I'll just take it off okay so there you go just a crystal now you, you get a lot of these on old TV boards there's sometimes you can get three or four of these on a TV board um, and older kind of um, any kind of old circuit boards you uh, you can still get a lot of these but mostly I find these on TV and video boards VCR boards um, but mostly yeah, CRT televisions you get a lot of these long ones and uh, yeah I just prefer these because I can do these by hand and I can get the little double out of silver and the rest that I keep separate the crystal oscillators and crystals together tiny little crystals um, I'm just going to look for another way here's a little crystal that's a little bit taller than the rest Let's see if I can get this out but I doubt it it's just because they're so small they're just hard to set up and hard to break open and um, and uh, how to work out what's what okay all right so out of this one nothing in there doesn't look like much left on there apart from one of the wires but here's a little tab now we got this little tab out of this one because this one's a little bit longer than the the regular ones so that's a little piece of silver there that there and um, and so there might be just just a touch of silver on the ends there but yeah nothing in that cap anymore so that's the silver so you know if, if you if you wanted to um, you know if you, another thing I tried was to um, to hold it like this somehow and then put on a grinder but by the time the grinder got through to the cap um, I found that I lost the stuff anyway so um, yeah the only real way is to sort of uh, just to get into it with some kind of side cutters and uh, do your best but otherwise maybe look at another way to sort of um, to process the whole thing in one go uh, okay so it looks like we've got the little bit off yeah so as you can see it's such a small piece of um, silver and crystal in there that it barely registers and so when you open it up it's instantly crushes and all it is is just the little little specks of silver so like I said it would take thousands of these little ones to, to get an ounce of silver to get 20 bucks worth so um, so it's up to you but um, you know as I mentioned there's um, crystals on uh, you know a lot of boards and um, so you know so one two three crystals um, so if you're doing a lot of circuit boards you're going to build them up anyway so rather than leaving them I like to take them off and accumulate them for silver recovery um, yeah and so you might want to or if you can't be bothered maybe just leave them um, on the circuit boards you know because um, I've just shown you how fiddly these ones are but I've also shown you how easy these ones are to get the little piece of silver out and then um, uh, what you do with that afterwards is up to you um, uh, personally um, you won't see me refining silver or gold or anything um, for a quite a few years yet 
Um, I don't have time to do all the research and study at the moment, but when I do, I'm going to spend a lot of time researching and, um, and seeing if I can go and visit other refiners and um, learn from them. But uh, because um, refining stuff and you know dealing with chemicals is really dangerous, so um, the easiest way for most scrappers is just to accumulate your stuff and then either sell it as it is um, for what it is, or send it to a refiner, a toll refiner that can refine it for you and either send you back the the, the precious metals or send you um, money for what they get out of it. Um, that's the best way that I see for most scrappers, you know, unless you're a budding refiner, uh, for everyone else, just just accumulate it and then uh, either sell it or send it to a refiner. Too easy. All right, so that's uh, silver in crystals and crystal oscillators. Um, like I said, they're everywhere on board, so, you know, since you're, you're scrapping boards, you might as well pick them off and build up a collection of your own. <laughs> and, um, you know, if you like to collect things, they're fun to build up. And, um, and that's it. Well, keep scrapping, have fun, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Um, I might start talking about, uh, you know, little little gold bits, you know, the all the freaky little gold connections and stuff that uh, I don't normally deal with, but um, they build up too. And um, when I get all that gold stuff sorted out, I might do a video on gold pins and stuff like that. All right, well, keep scrapping, guys, and I'll catch you uh, next time.